holy procrastination it's two o'clock in the morning so let's just jump right on into it iron man is a racist tennis is sexist canada is full of misanthropists and one democrat is sounding very trumpist i'm anthony and this is allow me to retort Thank you guys for tuning in to another video today we're just gonna jump right on into it it's pretty late because I've procrastinated for way too long to record this video so here I am Friday night two o'clock in the morning um, our first story is Robert Downey jr. saying he doesn't regret wearing blackface in Tropic Thunder you're probably confused you're wondering what this is well First off, Robert Downey Jr. has been acting for over 30 years now. He's donned a lot of costumes over time, but none have been as shocking or as funny, in my opinion, as when he played Kurt Lazarus, which was a white Australian actor who took the role playing a black man in Tropic Thunder. This movie was riddled with hilarity. It's classic, and I normally don't like this type of humor, this fat white man, over-the-top, edgy comedy, but Tropic Thunder is great. And that's probably because Ben Stiller wrote it and he is skinny, unlike the very unfunny Seth Rogen or the extremely unfunny Jonah Hill or the moderately funny Jack Black. But that's a whole nother theory that I'm working on, how fat white comedians are unfunny, but fat white men that I know privately, they're hilarious. I don't get it. Where's the disconnect? And the reason Tropic Thunder is back in the news is because Robert Downey Jr. was recently on the Joe Rogan Experience, which is a podcast where Joe Rogan, who I don't particularly like, does an interview with many different hosts. He's had all types of people on from the left, from the right, uh, comedians, entertainers, actors, whatever, you name it. If they've got a big name, Joe Rogan wants to talk with them. And he sometimes has good dialogue, but personally, I don't really like Joe Rogan. And anyway, Tropic Thunder came up, and then the blackface came up. And Robert Downey Jr., instead of backing down and saying, oh, it was a horrible mistake, I regret it, he owned up to it and said this was a funny moment. There was no ill intent. I think that's the whole point of it, is this movie was satire. He was playing an actor who was so disconnected from reality that he did not realize that taking on the role of playing a black man would be offensive. And that's the whole principle of this comedy. And him and Ben Stiller and everybody who was in on it understood that. And despite the fact that there was a little bit of backlash in the beginning, Robert Downey Jr. was able to wash this off his back pretty easily because there was no ill intent there. And I think anybody with some common sense could look at this movie and laugh at it and think it is hilarious as it was. I think Robert Downey Jr. is hilarious. I think he's a great actor in every role he plays, whether it's serious or scary or hilarious. He just masters it each time. He hits the nail on the head. Uh, so I think good on him for not backing down. Obviously, of course, this was a lot of backlash he got for this. A lot of people were bringing it up again and saying this was racist and he was insensitive and blase blase they just want something to be upset about and robert downey jr said it himself he said 90 percent of his black friends when he asked them around he, they said they had no problem with him taking on this role and then people jumped on twitter and was like oh robert downey jr admits that he's okay offending 10 percent of his black friends listen you can't please everyone if you can please 90% of the people and then 10% of the people are upset, sorry, majority rules. Get used to it. That's the way life works. All right. So I have no problem with what happened or whatever. I would be in the 90% of the people who said, go for it, man. You're funny. I trust you. You know what you're doing. I'm interested to see this movie. And the movie came out. And it was great. It was funny. And once again, Tropic Thunder is in that genre movie with the, the Jonah Hill stuff and the Seth Rogen stuff that you may not find very funny because it is pretty raunchy but I think the difference is probably about 150 pounds which makes Ben Stiller hilarious so that's my take on it and in my next story we go to Australia with a French tennis player uh, during a game on the sidelines he asked a ball girl to peel a banana for him we're talking about Elliot Bencherit whose name I'm not sure I pronounced correctly uh, but what happened was he asked the ball girl on the sidelines to peel a banana for him. For some reason, he couldn't peel it himself. 
the SJW BLM, probably pro LG BLM and OP umpire saw this and thought this is my chance to virtue signal harder than I've ever done before. And boy, did he give Elliot a tongue lashing on the sidelines. He told him to peel the banana himself and he said the ball girl isn't your slave. Well, the problem here is Elliot wasn't treating the ball girl like a slave. He was treating her like a ball girl. She's paid to be there and paid to help out. And I'm sure peeling bananas may be a little bit outside of the scope of her job, but I'm sure she makes more money than I do in my nine to five every day by doing little things like that. On top of it, she had already done it earlier before in the game uh, and it just went unnoticed. She's done it before in the past for him. It's not a big problem. Now, of course, I risk sounding very misogynistic without giving a good excuse for why he did this. And so here I will. Elliot's fingers were very blistered and all taped up. You can see in the picture here from him sitting on the sidelines, he's got all kinds of tape and everything on his fingers, which is one reason why he didn't peel the banana. The other is he applies a cream, him and many other tennis players apply cream or some type of powder to their hand to fight against getting sweaty because they play a very intense, hard game. And because of that, he cannot peel his own banana. And if he did, he might risk getting some of that powder or that cream in his mouth. So that is why he has the ball girl peel it for him and then he can eat it. This umpire bashed at Elliot for asking for help. And so Elliot has to sit on the sideline and he proceeds to open the banana with his mouth. And I personally don't have any idea what the heck ball girls do on a tennis court. But I guarantee you it's probably not as undignified as being yelled at by a grown man and then peeling a banana with your mouth to eat it. I think this ref or this umpire was completely out of place and it just goes to show that people are so thirsty, so hard up to virtue signal and they jump in and insert themselves in situations without knowing what the hell is going on. Speaking of virtue signaling, let's talk about blackface champion of the world, Justin Trudeau. Uh, he's in trouble for buying donuts. And if that sounds ridiculous to you, that's because it is. Late last week, Justin Trudeau and a bunch of his cabinet members were all having cabinet meetings, talking about cabinet things, I assume. I don't know what they do in Canada. Um, and what he did was make a trip to a local donut store and pick up a bunch of donuts. And he made a Twitter post about it saying, hey, you know, I'm getting some great donuts. Actually, let's let's look it up. Picked up some of Winnipeg's best to keep us going through another full day of cabinet meetings. Thanks for the fuel. Hashtag old donuts. Hashtag shop local. Now to me, that sounds great. He's getting donuts. Everybody loves donuts. Hashtag shop local. This is a locally owned and operated store. Justin Trudeau is supporting small business in Canada. This is a man of the people. And the people are retarded because they jumped on social media and attacked Justin Trudeau for shopping at this place. Canadians were quick to point out the fact that the donuts from this shop are rather expensive. Old Donuts website, for a dozen donuts, it's $35. That's 26 US dollars. Uh, you can get 12 specialty donuts for as much as 45 Canadian dollars. That's pretty pricey for some donuts. Uh, and so a lot of people were attacking Justin Trudeau for not shopping at other stores. They were name dropping other stores like, oh, he couldn't go across the street to get X donut shop or, oh, he couldn't go down the block to get these donuts. I guess they're just not good enough for him. A whole bunch of retarded stuff is basically going on in there in Canada. So much retarded that the donut shop had to release a statement on their own social media saying, thank Justin Trudeau for his visit. And they also had to justify their prices by saying how they do everything everything locally and how they pay their people well and that explains why their donuts cost so much. It's just bizarre to think that here I am talking about news from Canada and it's because the Prime Minister bought donuts and everybody is upset at his choice in donuts because they think they were too expensive despite the fact that he still supported a local business and despite the fact that they're donuts. Who doesn't love donuts? This is what happened when you support local businesses Justin Trudeau. Listen to your constituents. Bernie Sanders is a career politician. Nobody likes him. He's built his entire career based off uh, discriminating against women and assaulting them and attacking anyone who disagrees with him. And he's just an all around bad guy. Nobody's liked him. He's nobody's ever liked him is what you would expect Trump to say. But this line came from the golden girl, Hillary Clinton. She is just destroying the Democratic Party. Hillary Clinton's got egg on her face. She lost to the big man, Mr. T, the Don, the Trumpinator, 
and uh, here she is now just cannibalizing because she she can't punch up she can't punch Donald Trump she he's out of reach she's not in her league so here she is cannibalizing her own party uh, attacking Bernie Sanders again and it's very interesting that she's doing this right around the time that her documentary is being released she's got a documentary I think it may be either coming out soon or it's already out on Netflix Hillary Clinton is bashing Bernie Sanders Bernie Sanders is laying over and taking it he was stopped for an interview and, and he just kind of blushed it off he said hey you know on, on a good day my wife doesn't like me that was Bernie Sanders response such a wholesome old guy who's going to lose to Donald Trump so sad so sad speaking of cannibalism uh, Hillary Clinton is being sued now by Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard is somebody who I've talked about in the past in a couple of videos. She's had a couple of run-ins with Hillary. She's obviously not on Hillary's good side and she's also had some weird run-ins with Google as well who she's also currently suing. There was a whole scandal where Google was throttling her search results. If you search for her on Google homepage it was very hard to find her and her AdSense accounts was being blocked. There was also on YouTube if you search for her it was very hard to find information for her or videos from the official uh, page of Tulsi Gabbard on YouTube you get all these secondary results similar to what they were doing to Steven Crowder and then of course there was Hillary who's been bashing Tulsi ever since Tulsi went and supported Bernie Sanders in the 2016 election I think Hillary's still holding on to some sour grapes from that and so here she is bashing Bernie bashing Tulsi uh, basically just making up things and uh, one of the things she made up she said that Tulsi Gabbard was a Russian informant or a Russian collusion which makes no sense you know uh, whose side is Russia on again is Russia backing Trump or is Russia backing Democrat Tulsi Gabbard who was a nobody until recently but here Hillary is throwing around false claims which is something a lot of people accuse Donald Trump of also like I said that statement she made about Bernie Sanders sounds a lot Trumpish to me you know that seems like a Trump line so I posed a question to some of you never Trumpers do you really think Hillary Clinton would have been that much better because it seems to me like what we got with Trump is he said the stuff up front from the beginning you knew who you were getting you knew this was going to be a man who says what he thinks and you might not agree with what he thinks but at least you know what he thinks on the other end you have Hillary Clinton who played the sweet girl who threw on a southern accent when she went down to Alabama and did all this good stuff and then here's what's really coming out this is how you really feel Hillary you're really nasty and vindictive just like any other politician I'm not saying she's any worse than any other politician except she is I am saying that actually sorry but any other politician would also do some of these same backhanded sneaky things and here's Hillary Clinton now that she's out of the limelight she sure is grinding that axe uh, just very interesting to hear her talking I mean if you really just read these quotes out of context it sounds like they come straight from Donald Trump so you know may the best Trump win in the 2016 election I think that's what happened and here we are today he's probably gonna take another four years um, so anyway that's my thoughts on everything you guys have a good night I'm Anthony and this is allow me to retort